name is Keith Keeley. I'm with the Savannah Institute, and um, I want to tell you about some projects we're doing with support from the from SARE. And uh, we have one project where we're studying the crop performance of agroforestry crops. So we're a nonprofit that that is focused on agroforestry, which is a way of using trees for various purposes on farms. And so we got support from SARE to study what are some best methods for establishing these trees, how do they perform, uh, what's the impact on pollinators on and around the farm, and what are some common pests and pathogens that might affect these tree crops as they're being established. Uh, and this is uh, one of the farms where we're doing that project, uh, Vulcan Farm. And uh, we're also working on another SARE supported project here at this farm. And uh, that is a project to study best, best methods of integrating livestock with those tree crops. Um, both of these projects have uh, helped our organization to accomplish our mission of studying how agroforestry works on working farms and what the opportunities are for those farms as they're getting started with these diversified systems and also what are some of the common challenges that these farms face and how can we work together to share what we're learning to overcome those challenges. So we, we have a network of a, a number of farms throughout the upper Midwest and it's a, a subset with each of these projects of four farms where we're doing this focused research and, uh, and that's gonna benefit all of the farms that we work with because the things that we learn will uh, will be valuable, already are uh, being valuable to, to farms uh, throughout the region. So we're, we're grateful to the support of SARE and uh, we've got some really excellent uh, farm, farmers that we're working with on this too. And so really excited to see what we continue to learn as these projects go forward. My name is Kevin Wools. I'm a farmer here in uh, Champaign-Urbana, Illinois. And uh, we have an agroforestry farm here where we're doing some silvopasture, grazing sheep in between rows of trees. We have some chestnut trees here. And uh, one of the big problems with establishing trees into an existing pasture is that sometimes the livestock like to eat the trees or knock over the trees or lay on the trees. And so we wrote a SARE partnership grant to evaluate several different kinds of tree protection for trees when they're at this early stage of establishment, which is critical for them uh, to, to get good growth early on and also to keep the sheep in here because those are the money makers early on because these trees aren't producing anything yet. So we, we've tried several different tree protection techniques. Uh, we have uh, tree tubes here of several different heights. We have a four foot tube here and this tree over here has a, a five foot tube. So the, the tree tubes are really nice and sturdy, keeps the sheep out really well so far, um, but it does kind of confine the tree a little bit more, maybe slowing down growth a little bit, uh, maybe some disease issues. Um, but again, the trees are, are at least alive and the sheep haven't touched them at all. Another treatment we have are these uh, uh, arbor shields. Um, these big, really sturdy, spiked cages, which are uh, uh, maybe a little bit overkill for sheep, but uh, they really keep everything out. Uh, but um, because the, the, the cages are a little bit larger, we can't get in as easily to weed right around the tree. So the trees um, are oftentimes a little bit more stressed uh, due to weed competition. And uh, also we're having issues with the trees rubbing uh, in the wind onto the, this metal portion on the top. The plastic from the tree tubes uh, doesn't have that effect because it's, it's softer. Uh, so that can be really damaging to the trees. So we're trying to experiment with some ways to hold the trees uh, straighter and steadier so they don't have that negative effect. Uh, the last treatment we're working with uh, for these chestnut trees is kind of bare bones treatment just a really short tree tube here uh, just to keep the rabbits from girdling the trees. But uh, basically the sheep have full access to the trees, deer have full access to the trees. And you can see that these trees are generally a little bit shorter. Uh, they do get defoliated a little bit uh, and maybe get rubbed on and browsed a little bit more. So uh, these trees are a little bit uh, behind in growth, but then again, uh, for protection uh, that is the cheapest option and easiest to install. So 
at the end of the grant when we kind of run the full uh, scenario in terms of cost, uh, labor from the farmer, and efficacy of the, of the protection, um, we'll be comparing all these treatments to see really which one works best in certain contexts. My name is Kathy Capel. We are on my farm near Sydney, Illinois, and I'm partnering with the Savannah Institute on two grants with SARE. The first one is establishing plants, which I'm not much of a plant person, so um, the, the guys at Savannah Institute have done most of that. I think my main participation in this was my willingness to lease 10 acres to them in order to improve the soil and the fertility on this land. It's timber soil, which is a less productive soil in this part of the Midwest. And corn soybean rotation doesn't seem like the best use of this type of soil. The idea of perennial crops just really appealed to me, and especially perennial productive crops. The second grant has to do with establishing the, the plants as part of an agroforestry practice that includes livestock. And I've raised sheep for several years on the farm, and it's given me an opportunity to expand the pasture that I have available to my sheep, and also to just increase some of the diversity on the farm and that I, you know, we are also finding out what the sheep eat, what they don't eat, and how they affect the diversity of what's here.